Hi everybody, today I'll talk about the surface tension. It's an important parameter in the fluid mechanics domain. The surface tension is defined like this. Measure of the force at the interface. between two immiscible fluids. So the unit of it is actually force per unit length. Okay, that's kind of unique. We don't see many, many engineering parameters that has force per unit length. The surface tension can be very important. It may not play any role whatsoever as well. And I'll talk about when it is important, when it is not important. Okay, so from my research area, I do microfluidics. Surface tension is much more important than the gravity. You know this, the little sound that comes from your faucet if it is leaking that drives you crazy. The reason why a small amount of liquid when it's flowing makes droplet is due to surface tension. So this is what I'm talking about in here. And if I'm looking at a large container, the surface tension is not going to be an important uh, parameter for me. So I have to be really careful about when it's important. First thing I want to do is I want to have a drop, okay? This is a liquid drop. And what I want to do is I want to look at the free body diagram and I want to just cut it off right over here, okay? So if I do that, what I'm going to obtain is I obtain like this kind of a shape, right? The help of it. If I cut this off, what will happen is there will be some pressure difference within the liquid drop and outside as well, okay? If this is like rainfall, so there will be some pressure difference, okay? And the area that this pressure is acting on will be right over here. Okay, this area will be the where the pressure is going to be acting on. So it's going to be delta P times what is the cross sectional area of a sphere? It's pi r square, right? Okay, so delta P times pi r square is going to be the force that it has over there. So then another type of force, um, and you can get a hint from the title of this particular segment is the surface tension and in the surface tension what it does is is actually focuses as this force per unit length looks at this parameter okay so that's what it has then if i write it this way okay so let's do symmetric just to be clear there's not just two forces it's everywhere acting on this uh, perimeter and it will be the surface tension times 2 pi r or pi d as well okay so this is the parameter. So these are quite different. This is the parameter, and this is the cross-sectional area of a sphere, right? Pi r square. So then these two forces must equal each other uh, for balance. And if we do that, we are going to have this: the surface tension times two pi r will be equal to delta p times pi r square. Delta p. So the pi's cancel out. So one of the r's cancel out like that, and delta p. So it will be divided by r over here, and I will have 2 times sigma, okay? So basically, if you look at this, the pressure difference within a droplet, liquid droplet, will be, delta p will be 2 times the surface tension per r. And if you want to do with respect to d, some people do that, delta p will be equal to 4 times the surface tension divided by d because r is equal to d over 2 right so this is an alternative version of writing it down another place where surface tension is fairly important is let's say that i have a container like this okay and what i have is some kind of a liquid that i have free surface over here and i get myself a tin tin is the keyword that i use over here okay Tin, it's like a glass. You know, back in the day, people were using mercury. We don't really use mercury anymore because of the safety issues with it. But mercury barometer and all, right? You can see that the temperature is indicated by this red colored liquid, right? So that's what I'm talking about here. It's fairly thin uh, glass that I simply take it over here, put it over there and see what happens. And then what will happen here is, okay? So the liquid level is here. Do you think the liquid level here will be like this? No, in fact, it's going to go up. Okay, so it's going to go up. And actually, there will be some the surface, if this is water, is going to be like this. Okay, so there will be some angle to it. And we call this angle between here and here is theta. And this theta is 
contact angle. Okay, so this theta is the contact angle or angle of contact. Some people call it that way. Let me do some balance over here because I, I may be interested in determining this height that it travels. Let's say right in the middle of it. Okay, let's say this is the H, and I'm interested in what is this H. Then I'm going to take the free bad diagram of this and see what happens. So I'll have this, okay, the weight, okay, that will be right over there. And I define this, I'm drawing this, this is the H, okay, so I'm trying to, you know, neglect the effect of that curvature over there by taking the half of it, okay. And there will be some surface tension over here and over here, right? And again, I will be going just like this. It's the same over here. It just changes the direction. So it's going to be 2 pi r times the sigma, okay? But this time on, I have an angle, right? So this is symmetric, so this is theta. So then let's try to do that with the theta. So as you can see now, the surface tension forces needs to be equal to the weight of it. So the weight of this uh, column, the water in that column will be, well, mg, we all know that. Here's the kicker. We don't really use mg in fluid dynamics. So that's kind of a interesting observation. I mean, I, un under I understand, weight is mg, I'm not changing that. But w when was the last time you see something that people talk about, like I have a, I don't know, 500 kilograms of water or something. We don't really use mass. Okay, we use volume, but don't, don't get scared. So we have this mass divided by volume is the density. So I will actually, what I do is I will just basically density times volume. So, okay, let's do that. Density times volume times gravity. Okay, so do you remember the combination of these two terms? That is called the specific weight times the volume. So that's where the name specific weight, the second word comes from, is actually weight per unit volume. So this is what it is. This needs to be equal to the uh, surface tension forces. So what is the volume of this shape? It's going to be pi r squared times, r is the obvious radius over here, times the h. Okay, good. So now I'm going to equate this to 2 pi r times sigma. So what's up with this angle over there? Is that going to change anything? Yeah, it does. I have to multiply this whole thing by cosine, right? Cosine of the angle between over here. Actually, I'm not, I'm not doing a greatest job over here with the angle, so let's do this here. So it's like this, and this is the theta, okay? And this is the force itself. So sine of that component will be right over here, right? That will be in this direction. I'm not really interested in. If you think about this, and there will be symmetric of it, they will cancel each other. But this component is the one that I'm interested in will be equal to specific weight times pi r squared times h. So the goal is to get h over here, right? So the pi is out, this r squared is out. Okay, so from here I may get something fairly manageable. So I get myself 2 times the sigma times the cosine of theta divided by the specific weight times the r. So this will be the equation that I obtain for this particular geometry.